But the president leaving this morning for that second foreign trip. He'll arrive in Poland this afternoon where he's expected to make a speech to affirm the U.S.'s commitment to NATO and its allies, followed by that G20 meeting in Germany where he'll meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. That's the first time this bilateral is taking place since the election. That was the highly anticipated event of this meeting, but now the focus will be turned to North Korea, taking center stage after Pyongyang launched that intercontinental ballistic missile shown here according to North Korean state TV. The country now says it could carry a nuclear warhead and experts say it could reach the U.S. as you guys were just discussing. That emergency U.N. Security Council meeting that will take place later today after the U.S. and South Korea conducted a joint missile launch in response to show the precision of those allies in being able to potentially launch a military strike. Now, President Trump is expected to take up this issue with President Xi of China at the G20. He has repeatedly criticized the efficacy of China's efforts to thwart North Korea's nuclear ambitions and tweeted yesterday perhaps a quote heavy move was needed from Beijing now in response. The president did not mention the issue Tuesday night at a July 4th White House event for military families but he did acknowledge that the U.S. faces challenges. I will always have you back. I will always under all circumstances. Our country is doing really really well no matter where you look. The economy is blazing, and on every front, we're doing well. And we do have challenges, but we will handle those challenges. He's tweeted recently about wanting gas prices to be lower, about job creation under his administration, about the stock market again hitting uh, intraday records. Uh, but Joe, a week ago, you might have said the challenges that face the U.S. are on the legislative front and enacting the agenda. But these geopolitical issues have a way of cropping back up and quickly uh, usurping any other discussion points. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's our discussion this morning. You, you can't, you know, I don't know whether you call them black swans or what, but it's like, the end of the world, if you're in cash, it's not going to matter, Kayla, I don't think. You know what I mean? Because cash ain't going to be any good anyway. Maybe gold, I'm not sure, but it's hard to prepare for the end of the world. And it, it, it can only happen once, I think, right? If I got that right, you don't have to keep preparing for it. But, I mean, North Korea... I haven't confirmed that, but it sounds right. <laughs> but if you were really a worry ward, you would start worrying, uh, I, I think, at this point. But then again, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you worry about the overall economy if nothing does happen, because all these legislative things at this point look like gravy. I mean, you've got deregulation, you've got Europe coming back, some of the great gains over in some of the European uh, bourses. So you've got a lot of things that, and we'll talk to Re Rebecca about it now, but you've got a lot of things that are positive. And, and I don't know whether the market is, anti is already got these, these pro-growth policies factored in. I think that they could, could go even further if they get done. I think right now it might even be gravy, but that not everyone feels the same way. Well, Joe, specifically with regard to the events unfolding uh, in the Korean Peninsula, there's some attention being paid today to the fact that Asian markets are largely sanguine on the back of what happened over the last couple of days. But there is a little bit of activity in the options market where you might be able to sense that investors are trying to prepare their portfolios for perhaps a black swan event or something unpredictable uh, to happen because it is just so hard to size up exactly how this situation resolves itself. Here in the U.S., the fundamentals still appear good. That's what we keep hearing about growth, about corporate earnings, and about some of these agenda items that are happening behind the scenes. Uh, but there is still a lot of confidence baked in that Washington can, can get some of these uh, legislative proposals beyond the finish line. And there hasn't been that much progress made on the budget front, which is really going to ramp up when Congress returns from recess next week. So there is a lot to get done. The clock is ticking. Uh, but for now, obviously, some bigger issues are at the front of the table. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.